Hey y'all, it's Jenny Mosley and Dr. Ryan Reeves. And we are here live with the Elevate Effect. It's time to take the dental field to a whole nother level. Fly with me folks, let's get real and let's get uncomfortable. Well, hello everybody. <laughs> we have a really feminine Dr. Reeves here today. <laughs> hello, so everyone. let's say hello to Jordan. Hi, hi, hi. How y'all doing? <laughs> Jordan is um, the new patient coordinator at Beyond Exceptional Dentistry. At the same time, she is, we're, we're somewhat in this thing together, and our future is to build other businesses together. So she's been behind the scenes of this podcast from Jump, and um, if it goes well, we say good job, and if it goes bad, we say bad job. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, she's here today. Reeves is um in North Carolina with family and we are having a hurricane uh run through Florida up our coast so as soon as this is over we finish out some patients and we head home so we wanted to not miss this because the topic today just so you know Jordan okay um been speaking a lot to a lot of my teams and i think some of the hard parts of this type of practice and you can speak it in your role jordan mm -hmm. is it's just it's not a normal just job that you wake up and get dressed for and you punch a clock and then you punch out and then you go grow in life this job is where your growth happens yeah i mean i i honestly would 100 percent agree with that <laughs> i mean every in, moment yeah in yeah. the past year and a half I've been in this role I'd say that I almost have completely changed as a person because it you're constantly in it constantly yeah it's it's just really interesting so when you're a leader and you try to lead people uh in this practice that's a whole nother level as well and so some of my teams are they've got incredible team members uh, incredible employees they found some good ones to do this but in the scheme of things, it's hard to get them to do it consistently. So what I thought I'd do is run through how to build the habitual way to do, or how to build that, the habits, or how to build a habit in order to thrive in this type of career. And then it could actually help personal habits. Oh, heck yeah. This is going to be a good one yeah, for me to be, be a, a part of. You, Jordan. <laughs> I mean, let's be real. Jordan has to get beatings from me every day, all day. <laughs> but I believe that when you, I guess when you won't go down one step, you go up three. So yeah. kudos to you. All right. So let, let's start this. So, you know, he, here's the thing. I mean, uh, as, as I promise you all, I either get a thought on my own or you all ask for a thought. So I go and do a bunch of research. And what was fascinating to me, oh my gosh, it was, but again, everything always is because I don't know why I keep getting proved by God or whoever, you know, your alter, uh, um, mentor is, is I always keep getting this proof that what we do and what we teach and how we do it in, in, even in the sales role, even in just being an advocate for patients, whatever it is. Every time we start to learn personal things, it's like connected to it. It blows your mind. So as I walk through this, I'm like, well, dang, we, we do this stuff naturally just as human beings. So I'm, I pray, I really think you all are going to grab some pearls here, baby. So let's do it. <laughs> okay. So number one step to building a good habit is creating awareness. You got to just, there's a what of like what is the habit that you're actually wanting to um, c cultivate? And then why, um, why do you want that habit? You've got to be aware of those two things. Identify the habit and make sure it is going to give you the result that you want this habit to give you. Don't just pick one to pick it. Like, you know, people that want to lose weight will start to exercise and then they'll go eat a hamburger. You know, it's like, wait a second, is the habit, the exercise that's going to give you weight loss? Because it's not, if you're still going to go eat really bad. So really understand what you want the habit to be. 
and understand why you do the habit, it should be an intrinsic, intrinsic, like we all know in dentistry, there's intrinsic stain and there's extrinsic stain. Make the motivation intrinsic. So that's personally rewarding, not outside. Like, like, like for example, you've got a team member and you want them to create a good habit of just maybe, I don't know, answering the phone uh, well every day or reviewing uh, a chart the same way every day. You want them to do that. Well, is what can you explain to them if the habit is for your practice You've got to get them to get an intrinsic motivation in order to actually do it. It's got to motivate them inside, not just get your practice ahead, because then that feels like they're going to fail. If they're only winning for you, then they're going to get scared to even start because they're failing you, not themselves. And the problem with a lot of leaders and owners is they just don't get it. Like, why won't she do this? Well, are you creating an intrinsic mo- motivation for them? Let's talk about some examples. And Jordan, as a team member, could maybe help. But like personally rewarding, what are some personal rewards that you could get from doing a habit for a practice to win? I mean, the first thing that always comes to my mind, I guess, from, money. <laughs> um, well, that is part of it. But no, really trying to um, help people. I know I've talked to Jenny about this a lot. When I never thought I was going to go into the dental field. I always knew that I wanted to help people. And so to actually go into something where I could make a difference in somebody's life and actually help them was important. But the why actually behind that is a little more selfish than what people think because it actually made me feel good. So I think that that, you know, is a lot of motivating factors is like, how can you make your team feel important, feel good, like they're actually contributing to something? Yeah. I mean, you've got to talk to, it's a great point. You got to talk to your team, each individual member, and find out what would motivate them, what is going to motivate them. And you've got to connect the habit you want them to make for you has to motivate them on the inside, personally rewarding. Some people's it's money. Some people it's time. Some people just need affirmation daily. I mean, whatever it is, you have to. So you've got to identify the habit. Let's just say, I need you to make two consults a day from the phone ringing. And then, so their habit, they've got to figure out what habit they need to create to make that happen. And when they get it, then they know what are they going to get as a reward. And so they, and, and please define the difference because many of us can get, it can get clouded if they just say, cause Jordan's can get clouded a little bit, but as we discovered through, it was really more for her own because we all want to help people, but she actually has an intrinsic motivation for that because it really does make her feel good. That is a a good thing. Don't just let someone say, well, I just know I'm going to change someone's life, but still, is that going to reward you? And how is it going to reward you? So really, again, create the proper awareness, folks. I'm telling you, please. Um, You know, I've got a bunch of different cats and we're making great transitions here. Um, New beginnings all over Elevate and um, Beyond Exceptional Dentistry and Brilliant Dentistry and all the people we work with and are partnered with. Lots of new beginnings. And a lot of that comes from how to help people create awareness that, in this type of practice, you have to have certain habits. Um, and it's unbelievable how when I was starting to study this, I'm like, well, I mean, it, it's unbelievable. If you don't do these five steps, you probably won't make it here at all or make it at this level at all. Well, I think also a really big thing that I had to learn, and I think a lot of people, especially that are younger, have to learn is that why behind it you know you go in and you really think okay I'm gonna you know exercise I'm gonna start exercising because it's quote unquote it's healthy to do that's not a why truly at the end of the day it's what you were saying about intrinsic intrinsic isn't you know 
what's it going to do for other people? What's it going to do outwardly? It's, you know, what do you feel internally? You know, what does that make you feel? What is it for you personally? Yeah, well, and that's what was really cool about this because so many people would connect habits to a personal thing Mm -hmm. and a lot of people don't connect it to a work thing. It's very Mm -hmm. sad. And they, you know, they're only at work six to eight hours a day. And they're personally, they're, a lot of them are working for you, not for themselves. And so they don't even connect that their day-to-day activities and habits and actions have a lot to do with what changes for them. They just could think that they're working those things for you. That's the disconnect. Make them create awareness to show up for themselves and see how they're going to change and motivate themselves so that then you get better habits out of them. I was just about to say that. That's so funny. Boom. (laughs) Bussin. My brilliant dentistry team has schooled me on being not so old in my language because, you know, (laughs) boom. So now they tell me to say bussin or actually, you know what they said? Bussin, not (laughs) discussin. Isn't that a fun little slogan? I know, right? Okay. Now, second step. So remember, first step, create awareness. Find out the what and the why and give it intrinsic motivation, folks. Um, It also says make sure that the what gives you the desired result of the habit. Make sure this person, whoever needs to, the per- person is that needs the habit, it's got to create a desired result for them, not you and your practice. It's not going to work if they're fighting for you. Trust me. Okay. Second step, create leverage. I love this because a lot of what we even do in a custom practice is we leverage a lot of events. We leverage emotional events big time. I mean, We are consistently looking to leverage people's experiences. And so why not do that just to create a habit? Like this to me connects to three different things. One, personal. Two, employee. Three, patient. I mean, imagine you're sitting in front of a patient. You're trying to get them to change. They have had a bad habit for a long time to not put themselves first. Mm -hmm. They're coming in your office and now you have to change a habit for them. You got to make them the, the important one. How do you do that? These five steps. I mean, I'm letting you're going, this is how I even talk to patients. Cause it's like, Hey, why are you here? What is it that you're trying to achieve? Don't do it for anybody else. What do you need that when you're done with this, you feel something on the inside. That's number one. Now, two is you got to create leverage. It makes the process easier. Remember, dentistry sucks for everybody. And so why would we not want to figure out how to leverage for this patient or leverage ourselves to make it easier? Leveraging comes from emotion. So it's, it's you had why and you had what. Now you have how. You have the feeling. What are the benefits of doing it? And what is the cost of not doing it? This is exactly how we Mm -hmm. talk to patients. It's crazy talk. Well, I mean, I'm sure a lot of you out there have felt this way, especially if you're in the new patient coordinator role. How often have you heard somebody say, okay, well, you know, I got to go home and think about it, or I don't don't know if I should do this. And you talk to my husband, whatever they say. And all you're thinking in your head is like, why won't you do this for yourself? Why? What is going on? And it's going, I mean, it's going back to that first that first point of you're not getting the why out of them. So, I mean, I mean, the first person that I think of in my brain is one of the patients that we're seeing today and just how, I mean, her husband had to come with her and say, you know, this is what you're doing. There's no question about it because she could not change the habit of not putting herself first. Yeah. I mean, that alone, you know, so we've got scenarios of, of patients, of employees and us as people. And so with, with a patient, you've got to create for them an awareness to have a new habit to, to say yes to you, to say yes to themselves. As an employee, you've got to create awareness that they're, going to, they're not working for you. They're working for themselves. You may just pay them, but that is all you should be doing. If you own more than that, you got a problem because you can't put, you can't create them to be different people. They have to do it themselves. So 
um, you know, check yourself. Okay. Yeah. Right. Boston. <laughs> okay. Then, um, and then with yourselves, I mean, you know, it's like, I, 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 my husband will say all the time, like we are, we're in New York city or we're, wherever we are in a vacation. It's like, you do it, never not do the same thing every day. <laughs> you get up, you go outside, you do your prayer, then you work out. It's like, we're on vacation. I'm like, well, to, to me, the a habit shouldn't change for where you are or what you're doing because the habit is for me. I'm doing it for me. It's intrinsically motivating me to have a great day. Why would I not do that habit? And so that's the point of what you're trying to get for people. So creating leverage, it's like looking at a patient and going, all right, let's talk about this. And when we talk about goal setting, right? Mm -hmm. You define a goal, <laughs> you talk about benefits, you talk about obstacles and you go through, okay, well, how are you feeling? Well, same thing. It's like, Hey, you walked in this door. You obviously want to achieve something. Mm -hmm. So let's figure that out. What is this going to give you? Mm -hmm. And if you don't do it, what is that going to give you? What is it going to cost you to not do this thing? You have so many people that put, put, put it off, if you will. And if you don't create leverage on that, you're in trouble because they are, again, easier to them. They think the easier is putting it off. Well, it's like going back to, um, we had a virtual training yesterday and one of the hardest things we were talking about barriers and, and things like that, that get in the way for patients. And one of the barriers is lack of urgency. And it's literally the same exact thing. And it's one of the hardest things to get people to see is that sense of like, do you understand that? Yes, it might feel easier now, but it's not going to be easier at the end. I mean, you know, and what's beautiful about all these things we're trying to do between the podcast and between the virtuals and just, just everything that Elevate cultivates, in my opinion, is just to change people's lives, no matter what. It doesn't matter what it's for. It doesn't matter what, but just, just in a little bit of a way, change. And because there's nothing more great than change. Um, change is, is, I mean, an infant to 60 years old, you know how much change there was? It's an addiction. So you have to, you have to cultivate change. So if you cannot recognize how to leverage to the process to make it easier for person and easier is if they think easier is putting it off. For example, mm -hmm. you're, there's your team member back to the phones and you just, you know, it's like create leverage. Them. Let's talk about, just say, Hey, what are the benefits of actually doing this thing and doing it the same way every day. Mm -hmm. What is the cost of not doing it the same way? Like look at it, really, really look at it. And then, and then create leverage for them and saying, Hey, the next time that you actually sit down and take an incredible call, let's, let's, let's sit right away, right away. And let's sit down and let's really talk about how do you feel at this moment? How do you feel? Leverage that moment and say, any time that you feel this for helping someone do that, I will do this for you. Mm -hmm. um, there's so much that you can create leverage on to allow somebody to have emotion inside creating a habit. Recognize where they are. Let's just say as a practice alone and custom practice. I mean, we we do celebrations. Now a celebration is to celebrate a patient for achieving something, but it also is to maximize an opportunity to leverage it and go, huh, can we share this story? Can we change others' lives? So we just, we create happy endings. Whoops. Ting. <laughs> we create those things in order to leverage on them as well. There's nothing wrong with that. That leverage makes it easier for other people to then call and say, I want that too. So do the same with your employee. You know, if you can think about any um, opportunity, create awareness, number one, identify it, identify what is going to do, how's this thing, what's this thing going to do to give you a desired result? And what is the habit? 
then why is the habit? Is that habit going to give you intrinsic reward? And then when you get that reward, leverage on it, create leverage, show and figure out the benefits of that emotion. Okay. Third step. Here's the hard part. Accountability. Goals are to be shared. If you don't tell someone that you don't, that you're on a goal, then you aren't going to be held accountable. If it's one person or if it's an entire team, um, I believe truly, if you're on a team, the team should know if you're in a relationship, just the other person should know it's all about who's in it with you to achieve the goal. Sometimes leaders and managers tend to protect. They think they're doing something with somebody, but they're protecting them and enabling them by not sharing it with the team. For example, somebody's struggling to answer the phone or do, or sell dentistry, whatever it is, they're struggling. And so you sit down as a manager and a leader and you kind of go, okay, let's talk about this. And you're now in this one-on-one. Why are you doing it one-on-one? Well, I mean, let's even make it an even more specific example. I mean, it, you said at the beginning, you know, I get beatings from you every day. But I, I a lot of times especially say for instance in our morning meetings a lot of people have come to me afterwards and been like how are you okay with what <laughs> oh happens in this gosh. meeting and the beating from Jenny <laughs> and it's not even i just don't even see it that way because honestly at the end of the day i'm very much a person i think a little bit of it is my age but i think a lot of it is my personality that if I don't have that accountability, I will not do something. I know that about myself. So I, in every part of my life, have to, I'm known as kind of an oversharer, but it's because I have to have that. I have to have somebody, you know, sitting there being like, hey, remember you said this the other day that you were going to do this. Why isn't it done yet? Or when I do something great or do something amazing that I said I wanted to achieve, that other person coming up to me and going, Hey, look, I don't even know if you're recognizing, but you got there. You did it. Great job. Yeah. I mean, if you include the group that is trying to get to the common goal, Mm -hmm. then they're in it fighting for you with the accountability and with the reward. Oh yeah. You know? And so I tend to feel like a lot of managers and, 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 um, they, you, you, or leaders, you get stuck a little bit in the, uh, now in the protection mode. And the, and the team's fear or embarrassment or whatever it is. And unfortunately, if that's there, then they're acting that way in the task that you're trying to get them to have. That mm-hmm. means that if they're feared of that, they're feared of everything. Mm-hmm. So you've got to break through that fear and bond them with everybody and say, hey, share your goals every day, share your struggles every day within the group that is trying to get there. They can actually help And they can actually help focus the reward. So again, third step is you've got to, you've got to come up. Remember, we've got the patient scenario. We've got team scenario Mm -hmm. and we've got the personal scenario. Mm -hmm. Talk about even with a patient. I mean, how many times do we talk about? We should never, ever. There's not often many times that you are getting somebody to do something and they don't have a spouse or a family member with them. The only people that do are the people that truly are solely independent. Um, but there's not a lot of them. So if you're not finding the patient's advocate or true person that holds them accountable, then they're going to never create awareness to create a habit and that you can't create leverage from their emotion because they're not going to show you their emotion unless their person is there to feel vulnerable to do so. So make sure you do that. Now, a lot of people can tend to convince that this type of, um, uh, style, I guess, if you will, could feel abrasive And, or it could be told whatever you want to do. And, you know, if you've got a team around you that understands who you are and cares to know that you are doing this for the greater good, then sometimes the assessment of what you're doing, if it's negative, it may just be that 
you have the wrong people. And honestly, Jenny, I mean, I think that's why a lot of times when people come up to me specifically, that's really the only, um, you know, experience I have, I guess. But when people come up to me and they ask, you know, how are you okay with this? Blah, 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 whatever they say, you know, at the end of the day, it's that I know that the leadership behind it, it's not negative. It's not negative. It's truly for growth. And there are people out there. I mean, I've experienced them pretty much my entire working life where their leadership goal is truly selfish at the end of the day. It's not for the people that they're working with. It's not for um, the people that they're supposed to be leading. It's for themselves and making sure that they look good. And when that is your true intent behind something, it shows through and it makes it where then you do have fearful, you know, employees, you do have people that don't want to actually push themselves and, you know, be honest and work through problems. They want to hide and they don't want you to bring light to anything that they're doing. And what's interesting too is about the open door, you know, there are a lot of things that are, are done in private, obviously folks. I mean, I, that, that's not what I'm saying, but I'm just, we're talking about just creating habits and creating good habits for team members and patients And the way that you have to do that is it has to be out in the open. Mm -hmm. It's got to be let out there so we can all learn how to help people get there. Um, And so, you know, as hard as this is, you know, if you're, if it's somebody on the telephone, then you need, everybody needs to listen to the calls together. Everybody needs to understand the goals that would happen together. If it's, if it's in the new patient room, Mm -hmm. everybody has to understand. I mean, like I said, I mean, I I mean, our entire world here is these steps. It's, it's, I mean, I feel every time we do this, I mean, I feel so good because this is really what we do day to day is constantly work on having and cultivating the good habits that share that, that get people to, to have a life-changing experience. Um, and I know that sounds cliche, but it's true. So, um, all right. So remember, number one, you got to create awareness, identify the habit, make it and make it, make it that it is one that's going to give you what you want at the end. What, and, and then why are you doing it? Make sure that it's, it gives personal intrinsic motivation. And then once you get that, create leverage from it. That will make it easier to get the habit to become one. If you don't leverage the emotion and the feeling that you get from it, you're going to lose how to create it to be a habit. And then always share it with the people within the team or the family, whatever it is you're trying to do, get it to be accountable, true accountability, not enabling. Fourth one, take action early. This is incredible because I started January at um, um, Denver with Eat the Frog. And I was like, God, I'm just, this is so cool. Take action early, be consistent. Eat the frog, man. First thing they, now this says, as, as I've always believed, first thing in the morning, you're like your best. You're, you're like, oh, now some people are. I mean, if Reeves was sitting here, he'd be like, no, I'm not. I need about 30 minutes. But truly, 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 it, your your body mechanics and your brain are have you haven't had anything tainted in it yet. Yeah, you might have a brain that overthinks at night and all that. But I just mean, and an something that ha, nothing has happened. You've created that, right? So it's your choice to decide how you start that day. It's your choice to take whatever action is to actually start that day. So. For me personally, no matter how I wake up, and I'm like you all out there, we all don't sleep. All we do is think about patients and <sighs> and 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 team members and sales and all this stuff and how to survive and all this stuff. But really, the the first action after all of that effed upness at the nighttime is really what makes your day. You have a choice, and so this this was this is really cool. Now you know you know the. Um, Who's that fighter? Uh, not fighter, the kick um, karate guy, Bruce Lee. Bruce Lee. I okay. This is what he said. Is this incredible? Because really, think about this. is so incredible. Moment of silence. <laughs> Listen. I fear not the man who has practiced ten thousand kicks once. I fear the man who has practiced one kick 
10,000 times. I mean, I just got chills. I'll say it again, just because. I fear not the man who has practiced 10,000 kicks once. I fear the man who has practiced one kick 10,000 times. And it's like, honestly, it's phenomenal to me because even in neuromuscular dentistry, you know, we, and, and I'll just speak in our practice, it's really hard to s- keep a clear vision. You have a lot of things that are thrown at you that want, you know, you just want to go, you know, for example, we see, we don't do anything different for anybody that walks in the store. Everybody that walks in the store gets the same thing. Everybody. And when you get thrown an opportunity like, Hey, can you just make it, you know, I got a family member in town. Can you just make it like a, come on, just do me a favor. And that conversation is hard because to stick to your vision, you know how many people come at you and go, what a bee. She's such a bee. She doesn't want to help people. Or, oh my God, well, I mean, you know, it's like there's just so much negativity that goes with really what this says. Okay. We are who we are because we practice the same thing over and over and over again. We don't just try to do it a million times and, and a different ways, but say we did it a million times. We truly want to do it one way and we want to be the best. So if you want to be the best, you got to do it one way and you got to do it one way all the time. So a lot of there's, and and even some things out there of marketing and all this kind of stuff. And we've been approached to do different types of marketing and stuff. And if it, it, and a lot of it sounds really great and it's great for some, but for us, if it takes us away from our process that makes us this Bruce Lee badass people, why would we do it? You know, like, If I can't deliver what I, in our practice, we know is what gets people what they want, why would I choose to do it? Just because? And that's so hard. I think a lot of people too, it's like, well, two things actually that I'll say. Okay. So the one thing I'll say Jordan is Jordan loves to just talk. I so do. she's going to go from one to two to three. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I was meant for a podcast. Um, no, truly though, people a lot of times I think go into these types of practices, at least when they're, they've been in the dental field, I'll say it that way, um, for a while because of the pristine, if you will, of it or the the – reputation that you get from working in a place like this and so they'll try a thousand different ways because they don't get it they get the look they say well you know I'm meant to be here you know I'm amazing and it's like well if you don't get the whole purpose behind it then you're really not um and then well now see this is why I can't well that's a good thing you know you know it's it's kind of refreshing um to have an employee here um And so much more than that, Jordan, but, you know, just because truly, um, it's probably great for others to hear that it's not easy. Mm -mm. It's very difficult. It's very challenging. It's, it's beat you down just to get you back up. Mm -hmm. Um, and for a person like you to, to, to say that, I think it's very helpful because Mm -hmm. when you're led by a vision, then you know, you're on a path with a target. Mm Mm-hmm. And so um, it's, you know, when you get thrown, when you try to get thrown off that path and you've, you yourself have seen it, when you leave it, it ain't good, man. Mm-mm. It ain't good. Yeah. No, I mean, there it is. That's my second point. See, I did uh, it for you. Uh, Boom. You bussin'. Thanks. But even going more off of that, like she's right. Whenever you don't actually follow these systems, you don't follow these, you know, visions, it makes it where it's, it's almost harder and then you're more disappointed and you get, you know, down in the dumps, if you will, um, to a point where you're like, why the heck am I even doing that any doing this anymore? And it gets to a point where you it's a hard it's almost a harder road back to the vision, if you will, than it was if you just stayed in it. And so, you know, if I could encourage you as an employee, anybody listening to this, just as hard as it is, just stick in it, you know. Like she said, it well, beats you Well, let's talk down, about that, but... Jordan, because I feel like what they're not recognizing, and maybe you can mm-hmm. speak to, is yeah. the hard is because they're not 
they're not creating a habit. What makes what's making it hard is they're not doing it over and over again. They're making it either their own or they're letting. Um, and I, again, I know I, I keep talking about either the phones or new patients because I just those are the two things to me that I feel like really need to have the habitual things down. Mm -hmm. And so I feel I tend to see that, for example, even with the phone, you know, if you don't do it over and over and over again, just the right way, like the 10,000 kicks, mm -hmm. just do it. Practice the one kick 10,000 times, just until you say, I can do this this way, then you can make it your own. I think mm -hmm. what happens is they make it, it becomes hard because they don't want to do the one kick 10,000 times. They want to do the 10,000 kicks and so they make, start making it their own and then it becomes too hard. Mm -hmm. And so you have to have like somebody holding you accountable or a team mm -hmm. holding you accountable to go, Hey, you're not doing it mm -hmm. the way you should. That's why it's hard. Just do it. Mm -hmm. So speaking to that is huge because it, it, it's, it's only hard if you don't do it. Mm -hmm. Isn't it weird? It's like, it is weird. I think it goes back to almost like the reptilian part of our brain, if you will. I mean, we as humans aren't meant to want to be in something that's difficult. We're not meant to do that. Our body, I mean, going even as cellular as homeostasis, like you're consistently trying to be even keel. You're constantly trying to be at this perfect level of medium, if you will. And so when you're in a place such as a practice like these, it makes it where that goes out of whack. And so you try these 10,000 different kicks because you're like, what's the easiest way? How do I get back to that homeostasis, that medium, that place where I don't have to feel like I'm constantly like coal becoming a diamond, all that pressure. Um, and once you finally, it's funny because I think what I've been trying to go through and figure out and be okay with is that maybe the homeostasis is just recognizing the fact that it's going to be hard. And that that's where you can find comfort in that even keel calmness, if you will, is well, the remember, acceptance. Eat the frog, right? I yeah. mean, let's just, I mean, this is, this is a Mark Twain. This is way, way moons ago. So that has been proven over time and time that if you, if, you know, the challenging stuff, the, the frog eating is what gets the reward. Mm -hmm. So why not just do it? Just take action early. The fourth step, take action early and it creates consistency, but start small. You know, if, if it's a phone conversation, then I would actually take what I do with my team is, you know, you go, okay, here's what I want you to do. I want you to just start taking the new patient calls and only start. And, and I only want you to get to the name or I only want to get, want you to get to the reason of their call. And then until they do that consistently 10 times in a row, then I give them another section. Then I give them another section until they do it the same thing every, every time until they become so incredibly good at that one kick. Then I say, okay, now go kill it. You know, and you can't, you got to help them create. Now, again, within that, they've got to, you've got to know what makes them feel good and what rewards them. And then you have to leverage it so that then they do it. Um, but remember, start small, but start, just eat the damn frog. Okay. Um, anyway, fifth step, reward yourself. I this love this. Are you ready part. for this? The problem is that people, and I believe this is so dentistry, people celebrate results, not action. And the fascinating thing about that is results are not within your control, guys. Remember, you make goals. The goal is there, okay? The goal is there. You, The, the next step to the goal is you create, you, you go, okay, these are the benefits I'm going to get if I achieve this goal. This is what I'm going to have to work through to get there. These are the people that I need and all of those things. Okay. Now, when I get to that goal, whatever happens, whatever happens with me having that goal, I have no clue. The goal I can control, the result I cannot. So when, if you have the, uh, like people getting rewarded for what happens after the goal, no wonder they're scared. 
because now they're thinking that if they don't achieve the result, then they suck. And they're not even in control of the result. They should only be in control of the goal. That is very true. Crazy, right? Yeah. (laughs) So like, again, let me say that again. People, the problem is people celebrate results, not action alone. Just reward the folks for their action. For example, we, we, um, we've got new patients all the time. We've got hygiene patients. I mean, we, we give up every day. Somebody gets a gift in our office every day. If it's an, if it's a hygiene patient, if it's whatever it is, every single day, somebody's rewarded because we feel that that is, we're just happy that they got up, they got in their car and they chose us for that time frame. That is a reward for their action not for what they're going to get from the visit, not for selling anything to them, just for getting in their car and coming. And that is part of creating good habits in your patients. Make them see that you appreciate their action. And remember a couple of weeks ago, we talked about the difference between activity and action. Mm -hmm. Activity is waste of energy. It's like, yes, you know, it's like taking action is way different. Have purpose, have goals. And don't just reward for the result. Like, you know, this is why, you know, a lot of people have bonus systems. Mm -hmm. And I, I, the only reason why I can't stand the word bonus is just because that's to me what that means. When you make a certain number, you get a certain amount of money. And that, honestly, I'll be honest with you. I mean, I don't know, but a lot of people then are, I mean, that's a lot of pressure. I mean, that is just a ton of pressure. And so, you know, what if, I mean, we've got numbers that are like, we just want you to be talking about it all day. Mm-hmm. We just want you to go, I want you to talk about it all day. I want you to be able to have, we've, we've got numbers that we can present to people. We, we can, I mean, we have, we have, um, um, goals for just reviews. We have goals mm-hmm. for testimonials. We have goals for celebrations. You know, it's like, just remember, I mean, t- t- no wonder team members fear the action because since the reward is focused on the result, then they fear the action to get there. Make the result, the action, uh, reward the action. Watch how many people start going. It's crazy. In this entire podcast, I've been having like these little epiphanies, if you will, in realizing certain things. For instance, um, one thing that just came to my mind, thinking back, working here for so long, every time that Jenny has ever really, you know, given me praise or, you know, said good job, <laughs> whatever you'd like to think of it as, it's never been for, like she's saying, it's never been for a result. It's always been, you know, say for instance, if I have a new patient consult and it doesn't pan out where the person comes back for an exam or we don't close on them, you know we'll go back and we'll talk about it. And yes, there are things where it's like, okay, you could have done this better. Well, that's why they didn't close whatever, whatever, whatever. But there's always something within an action that I did in that consult that it's, but hey, this was really good. Keep going in that direction. Cause that, I mean, that was exact, that was spot on. That's what you wanted to do. And that motivates me to want to go do it again, but then make the next step, the next thing even better so that I can get that immediate affirmation of, oh, I'm doing good. I'm getting better each time. It doesn't make me fearful to know that something didn't pan out. The result didn't pan out. It more so makes me want to go and kill it, if you will. Yeah. You know, it's like, um, I can't, Im- <laughs> I can't imagine when Jordan comes in the office, I'm like, all right, Jordan. And she (laughs) instantly goes into this. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. What's she going to do now? (laughs) Um, but as I was writing these things down, I'm thinking to myself, this is literally what we do every day. It really is It's really incredible. I mean, it's numbing. (laughs) Um, but I'm proud of Mm -hmm. it. Um, and I pray that this really, really, attacks people where it needs to. And I foresee that this could be an incredible another podcast or 50 Mm -hmm. plus some virtuals because Mm -hmm. 
a lot of this, for example, um, if it's a personal habit, you know, here are the steps again. Let's just say a personal habit is to lose weight. I don't know. I'm just picking something. Do you guys recognize, though, that losing weight is not a habit? Ooh, explain that more because I think a lot of people would think it was. Okay. So, and some people, now losing weight is a result. Okay. And you can't control the result. Okay. So, what for you would get you on a path that could possibly help you to lose weight? Like a why behind it? No, I'm asking you, pick something. Like what could get somebody if to want to lose weight? No, no, no. I'm asking. Okay. Losing the weight at the, you know, having weight loss is a result. It's, and you can't control that. Okay. What you control is how to lose weight. So what would be one habit that someone could, I'm going to, I'm going to try to develop this. We're going to play. This will be fun. What, what one habit could somebody do to lose weight? Oh, um, walking a mile. Okay. Exercise. Yeah. Okay. So now you see what we just did. So the habit we're going to try to create is wanting to walk. Okay. Okay. Because intrinsically Uh they are on a path to hopefully weight loss. If weight loss is not in your control, Jordan, if you did walk, what, what besides the weight loss would give you motivation, like would be a reward knowing that obviously the weight loss is your result, Mm -hmm. but you can't control how much Uh you can't say, I want to lose 50 pounds and you're going to go do it. And you just can't, you can control everything else. So what, what would give you motivation to walk? Oh gosh. See, this is the hard part about it. (laughs) Okay. Let's talk about it. I mean, what are some benefits to walking it releases serotonin okay it 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 could could fill in some type of um a chemical imbalance Mm -hmm. okay Uh, it could lead to weight loss yeah what else um you get fresh air you get fresh air (laughs) if you go outside (laughs) um you could listen to music you could Listen you to know, podcast. Listen to a podcast like Elevate Effect. <laughs> um, there's, uh, uh, you could, hey, you got kids. It could be your time away. Oh, that's a good one. It could be your, it could be your prayer motivation. It could be that time where you can't find time to do something for you yourself. You want to go for a walk. There you go. <laughs> okay. So we identify that the habit is to walk. Mm-hmm. We want the we want to do this because truly it's going to lead us hopefully to weight loss. Mm-hmm. And with that, while we're walking, we're going to have time away from everything. We're going to be able to either listen to music or do something we love for that short amount of time. Mm-hmm. Now, when we do that, how can we create leverage to make the walking easier? For example. Let's just say for you, you said this, she can tell she's a psychological major or whatever, because you said release serotonin. Okay. So what is a benefit of serotonin being released for you? Kind of what you were saying. It helps with like just the chemical imbalance of, you know, feeling good, not feeling constantly anxious. Okay. So for you, you're in a job that's stressful. Correct. (laughs) A little bit. (laughs) And now you're going to create a habit that could actually release that for you so that you don't bring it home. You don't go home to your man or your dog and get pissed at them or your mom (laughs) on the phone on the way home. You do something that releases that in Mm -hmm. order to change who you're going to be. Okay. That's a good leverage. Thank you. (laughs) Now, what is the cost of not doing it? Probably I'm going to go home and yell at my boyfriend a lot. (laughs) You're going to get on the phone with somebody, take it out on somebody. You're not going to get to losing weight. You're not going to release the serotonin. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're now recognizing the things you didn't think about. Now you're putting in the forefront and you're going, holy shit, why wouldn't I do this? Doesn't even make sense. Yeah. I mean, think about it. You have all of these positives. So how, if you were going to go walk after work, how do you become accountable? What the hell did your leader do to make everybody accountable? <laughs> We're actually doing a charity where we have to go walk. 
so. as a group, we have 350 miles to go from melanoma uh, that we're doing. And everybody's in the group text and they know everybody's got to do walk or run seven miles a week. So a mile a day. And whoever doesn't do it, you can tell. And we're mm -hmm. like, okay, you didn't do your walking, did you? Cool. So, I mean, how cool is that? You don't feel bad. You're just like, oh, yeah, she's pushing me, mm -hmm. you know? And what's nice, too, is like, for instance, it's funny that we're talking about this because as this entire office knows, um, I'm very big on working out my mind, but not my body. And so for this walk, I definitely have needed a, a whole bunch of accountability, this whole goal. So Erica, actually, a lot of times she'll see, oh, Jordan hasn't been saying that she's been going on walks recently. Okay, Jordan, we're going to go walk around this park together. Meet me here at seven. And so it's her holding me accountable by also being like, okay, we both have to do this. We're going together. Yeah. And you know, what's interesting not to squirrel this because we're going down a good road, but same thing for a patient. Um, I'll never forget. I had a patient um, about four or five years ago that was just, you know, I, I and, and I thought about this. I literally did this with this patient and she, she was walking through all the steps of, of this habit, habitual change. I want to change my life. I want to make a difference to myself now. I want to do this. I want to do that. And then it came down to paying for it. And she's like, I just can't pay for it. And I said, you know, and, and we got close. So I, yeah, you, you won't only do this to, with people that you're close with. But I, I'm not joking. I sat this with this woman for hours and we did a financial budgeting together. And it was incredible what she was spending on home shopping network and all this kind of stuff. And by the end of our meetings, she changed her shopping to purchase this life change. And I'll never forget that because I was with her to create a different habit because we, she, she knew what she wanted. She knew why she wanted, she knew what it was going to do for her yet. She wouldn't pay for it. Didn't seem, didn't seem right. So her, her sharing that with me made her accountable. It made her accountable to go, holy crap, I am spending so much money. I didn't even realize and I have money. Um, and so we were able to sh shift things around and she was able to get her life changed because she shared the accountability of it. That's a huge step. And that's such, and not to toot your own horn or squirrel a little bit more, but to be able to actually do that and have that kind of, and it, it wasn't a selfish thing, at least I don't think for you to sit down with her or anything. Of course not. And so for you to actually care about her enough to do that. I mean, that truly should, like, that's what you should be in this for. You should be, I mean, in everything in life, truly wanting it to be better for somebody else because honestly, karmically, it's going to come back. Well, you know, I mean, how many people want to be haters? Okay. Mm -hmm. Haters going to hate. You know who you are. <laughs> and I know you're listening. <laughs> so, and that's fine because truly deep down, um, you know, we, me and whoever is around me that stays around knows who I am and knows what we do. And what we do is for the greater good for all of our growth and for everyone around us. And so, if, you know, people that don't truly understand advocacy and accountability want to hate. And, you know, patients that really see that what we're doing is for the better good is why we change so many lives. So, um, thank you for saying that, but, um, okay. So let's go back to you walking. <laughs> okay. So now that we've held it out from anybody now, no one can hide. Correct. Um, maybe Bree, Bree's hiding. She's the only one that's not been doing it, but anyway, <laughs> her last too. days today, <laughs> whoop, whoop, bussin'. Okay. Anyway, and then take action. I mean, seriously, eat the damn frog, get out there because, uh, my daughter, I go home last night. And she says, mommy, let's go for a walk. And I was like, oh man, you know, I work out every morning and I like to work out about, about two or three times a week. I like to work out twice. So this wasn't my day to work out twice. So I was like, oh, <laughs> but you know, she goes, look, I promise, you know, we're going to get home and you're going to be happy you did it. And we, we get, we go, you know, almost a mile and that's hard for her. So at the halfway point, we turn around, her legs started to hurt. And she said, but you know, if we just do this, cause she wanted to go a little farther. And I said, trust me, cause most people that start walking and running, I'm not kidding. 
you go so far and then you go, oh crap, I got to turn around. Right. And you <laughs> yeah, don't remember, true. please start small. Trust me. <laughs> when I started running, when I was like 10, no, um, you got to like literally start small. Um, but then she said, you know, if, if I said to her, listen, let's do this one over and over and over again until you come back where your legs feel okay, then we can add time. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, my God, I'm doing it with my kid. It's unbelievable. And I'm like, wow, she really wants to, I, you know, I'm just proud because I thought, wow, I'm putting these great habits in her, but yet she's pushing. And so there's your team guys. Your team might want to go, oh, I want to do this now. I want to do this now. And you're like, well, wait a second. I didn't hear that you were consistent yet. Don't let them go farther until they're consistent. Because even if you feel like there may be a win, you still may lose. So would you say even, I'm thinking about consults and everything. You're sitting down at the consult and you're thinking, okay, they're consistent, they're consistent, they're saying the same message. And then you get to the options part, if you will. And they go, okay, well, what about this? Or what about this? Would you say that you pro you would go backwards and be like, I I'm sorry, apparently we're not consistent enough yet? Yeah. I mean, basically, it's like, hmm, okay, we we did not make their legs uh, not tired. Yeah. They're not. They're still walking with shaky legs. Okay. Another thing, too, is, um, you know, for example, Heather, just proud of her. I mean, you know, she's, we're all in this walking thing and she was starting at one mile. Then she went to two miles and just the other day she did four miles. And so, you know, like not only in this thing that we're doing is we're giving to melanoma, we're sharing and challenging each other and we're creating habits, healthy, good habits. I mean, hell we do it all over. That's all we do. Um, and so eat your frog, take action. Now, would it be great to get up like I do? And first thing, yeah, but if you can't, just do it. If, if, but do it right when you know you can leverage the event. Don't do it when it's easy. You know, if Erica McCready's listening to me right now, mm -hmm. she chooses to do it always when it's easy. And that's why it's not a habit for you yet, doll. She is so good at easy. Anyway, love her. Most but if you are, just, I, I know, but like I would, you know, if you had a rough day, do it right then. Leverage that event, man. I'm telling you, because when you are done with that, well, like my daughter last night, I'm like, well, she was so right. I was a little perturbed. We have the storm. I got patients coming in the end of the month. I mean, come on. What mother nature storm comes at my end of month? Not a good one. Okay. I'm PO'd. <laughs> but I'm sitting here going now, by the end of that walk, I come back and I'm like, you know what? In the scheme of things, it changed who I was. And so do it when it's difficult. That is why this practice and these custom practices are hard because mm -hmm. we make you do it when it's hard and you change for it. Mm -hmm. And then re reward yourself. You know, here's the thing. One, our reward in this melanoma thing is we bought t-shirts that are darling. We're going to go, um, we're going to have like a, a cool event. We're all going to get together and celebrate. And honestly, people are getting healthy. People are losing weight. Um, people are feeling accountable and they're getting their shit together. So, um, you know, again, numbingly things that we do, but we're taking consistent action to create successful habits. So I hope y'all learned something today. Jordan, you killed it. <laughs> woo woo. Mm -hmm. Risen spirits are us. Um, Come and see and me, baby. until next time, keep flying folks. Thanks for having me. Woo woo. <laughs>